Hey guys, Daniel James here, and today is some random day in August, I think the 10th, um, and I am currently in my apartment in Hungary. Um, my last video was in England, and before that we were in Tokyo. So as you can tell, moving around a lot. So I thought today's video we would do on my nomadic setup. So basically the rig I take with me when I move around the country. So first off, let me just show you what they're all packed in. So here we have two bags. We have my rucksack here, well, my backpack, and then we have the main studio case here. So in here, in this bag, I have a space for my laptop, which I've already got out here. So this is um, this is a MacBook uh, MacBook Pro. It's the, the latest one, the 2015, I think it was. I forget when the last one was. Uh, and it's got 16 gigs of RAM. I think it's like quad core, I, I forget, I forget, it's the, it's the best one you can get. So I got one of those when I was in Japan. As you can see, I've got all these converters and leads. Uh, their magazines aren't mine, ignore those. Uh, and also in the backpack there, I, by the way, I, I apologize, we're gonna be swinging around a lot today. So in the backpack, we also had my hard drive, and this is my main hard drive. I think this is six terabytes or four terabytes, I forget again. Uh, this contains my sample libraries, and it also contains, um, like my project files and things, so I can easily get them between my main machine back in England and my uh, portable one. This here is my SSD, uh, again, USB 3. These are both USB 3, so the transfer rate is fast enough, I've found, for um, composing with samples. So that's, that's what I keep in the backpack. As you can also see, uh, not much else, just a few other cables, you know, for headphones and whatnot. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what I actually take with me in the main case. I'm just gonna open it up. And as you can see, all nicely tucked away. So in this compartment here, this is where I keep like the tiny little MIDI keyboard I take with me. Uh, there's a MIDI controller down there. And then also uh, a whole bunch of leads that are all tangled. So I'm gonna have to deal with all that. And then obviously my, my studio headphones and they're all packaged in there. And then on the other side, this one's a bit tougher to get to, uh, I have, so I have another keyboard. So I actually prefer using um, the normal Mac keyboard because you get the extension, you know, you get the extra numbers, you get the page up, page down, whereas you don't get those um, with, the, with the actual built-on uh, keyboard. So I'm just gonna open this up until we take this away. So here we have, um, these here are my Genelec speakers. Uh, they're all bubble wrapped up. I, I really do recommend bubble wrapping stuff. And remember, this is a carry-on case, so this never gets checked in. Um, so, I mean, I, I'll open these right now, if I can. They're really stuck down. So I'm just gonna, just gonna put you down for a second. Okay, so, so this is one of my Genelex. And then these are basically just gonna go up on the desk over here, just for now. So you can see they're very small, very portable. So I have two of those. And then I also have my uh, UAD Apollo Twin. Again, you're just gonna put you down. And there we have the Apollo Twin, and then this has uh, this connects via Thunderbolt. So, as you can see, we've got uh, we have USB, and then we have two Thunderbolt slots on this, and then on the other side, we have uh, HDMI, USB, and this is for SD card. So this is what I'll be plugging this GoPro footage into. So what I normally do is I normally have um, an, a USB extension cable, uh, USB USB extender, and what I do with that is. Uh, you know, like it's, it's a port, so I, I have to make sure it's powered. That's what I run, like the mouse, I run the keyboard, and I run any extra bits, like an iLock, for example, off of those. I think the iLock is here, so I've got, this thing's worth thousands. Um, anyway, <laughs> don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> but, uh, so then, yeah, so in the USB hub, I have like all the extra bits, like the iLock, uh, you know, the, the ex like hard drives, which aren't, I'm, I'm not streaming off. And then what I, what I have is I use the other USBs for the 
uh, for the hard drive so I can use the USB direct uh, to stream them. And I tend to find that, I, like so far at least, like in the project I just did, uh, the big movie project I did that I can't tell you about yet, but I will. Um, I did it all on this rig here and it worked fine. I very rarely, only when I got in the really, really big projects. And on, the fi on that film, there was only one, maybe two cues out of 46, I think it was, that actually got that dense. Um, that was the only time when that happened, when it, you know, when, the, when it started to chug down. And even then, all I did was freeze some, um, freeze some tracks and, you know, and it was good as new. So what else do we have in here? So I have, uh, I have a, a cloud lifter microphone activator. So that's basically just to add some clean gain. Uh, and then I have another pair of headphones here, Sennheisers. Sennheisers. And those ones are, are, are particularly bassy. So I use those when I want to check uh, a bass mix. As you can probably hear, this is not going to be the best room for, um, for acoustics. Uh, luckily, this project has a mixer on it. So that means uh, I, can, I can just do like the rough mix in here and then, you know, stem it out and send it to him, which is why one of the reasons I have no problem working on this project here. Um, but also uh, I do have my headphones, which I, by this point, know inside and out. So I'll be able to judge how a mix is sounding spatially and, um, you know, like in overall kind of uh, EQ mix. I'll, I'll know roughly when it's good and when it's really bad. So it won't be far off. Uh, you know, I won't be far off what I've managed to achieve back in my England studio. So that's the good thing about this. Uh, like that, and if you remember in my last video, I talked about the headphones I have, and that's why I recommend, like, if you can afford it, you know, the difference between studio monitors and studio headphones, if you can afford both, get both. Um, because if you know headphones, it, regardless, of the, like, regardless of the room you're in, if you know your headphones inside and out, you can use them anywhere. It doesn't matter. You could use them underwater if there was some form of bubble unit you what what am i even talking about anyway <laughs> sorry i haven't slept much in the past few days so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hook it all up and i'll show you what uh, the studio looks like um, when it's all pieced together uh, and and then we'll uh, hopefully try playing some music through it okay so we've pretty much got the studio set up now i'll let you have a little look here so this is you know i managed to get all of that or no all of that in all of there however However, I just made the rookiest of rookie mistakes for when you're traveling. And I thought, well, I fucked up and now I can teach you guys not to fuck up like me. Okay, so what I did is I purchased um, a power brick for the country I'm in. And, you know, obviously I bought some power adapters for all the things that are from um, different countries. What I forgot to check is that all of my equipment was 100 to 240 volts. And if, like me, you're unaware what that was, I mean, I, I've heard it before. My, my dad and my brother are both qualified electricians by trade, so I should have known this better, and they enjoyed it when I told them about it, let me tell you that. But what you need to check is A, what the voltage of what you're plugging in is, and B, what the voltage currency from uh, the country that you're in uh, is going to be giving you. So, for example, the rookie mistake I made. So this, this here is my uh, powered... USB 3 hub, which I bought from Japan, which uses this adapter. Okay, so let me just put you down for a second. There we go. So I'm just going to unwind this and I'm just going to show you. Um, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it, but let's have a look. So if we have a look down here, I'll try and get it in the light so you can see it better. So if you look at, at the information on there, you may be able to see this number here that says the AC is 100 to 120 volts. Now, I thought that that said 240, like I was convinced that I would be fine. So obviously when I plugged that into uh, the adapter, the 100 to 120 volt box received 230 volts from the socket, which means it blew up, which means this is now useless to me, which means I can't use my USB 3 hub. Now what you need to look for, and unfortunately I've plugged everything in, um, well, I'll show you this, for example. You won't be able to read this, but I'll tell you what it says. So like this, for example, like the Apple USB uh, plug. What it says is the voltage is 100 to 240. That means I can plug this into a European socket and it can handle all the voltage from 100 to 240. So the, each country has different voltage. So Japan, for example, has a very low voltage. It has 100. 
Uh, North America, I think, and I've got it up on the screen, has 120. And then Central Europe and I think England both have 230. So that means if you have a piece of equipment that is under what the wall socket is giving you, you're going to blow up the socket. Or you're going to blow up your adapter. So that's something to check. So now I need to run over to the electronics store and buy a new USB 3 hub because uh, this, this unit that I have only takes up to 100 volt, um, which unfortunately is not good enough for what I've got here. So I'm going to have to go buy a new USB 3. And this time I'm going to check that it can handle 100 to 240. If, you, if you've got 100 to 240, you can plug it in anywhere in the world and it won't blow up. Um, something worth uh, <laughs> mentioning, I think, in the vlog. But everything else, so, so for example, the Apollo Twin was 100 to 240. These were 100 to 240. Uh, USB just goes through the system, but the Mac is um, the Mac can handle, handle 100 to uh, 240. So it, everything except my USB 3 hub, which I thought I'd read works uh, up to 240. I, I thought everything was. So unfortunately, I made that mistake. That's my mistake, and that's on me. It made quite the, the colorful light show when I plugged it in. I got a little shock, so that was a, a nice waking up moment. But uh, So now I'm going to go buy one that will work. But something worth checking on all your electronics if you travel to different countries like I'm currently doing. Uh, and that, that's another thing, very, particularly because I know a lot of the people who watch this are American. Um, your voltage is only 120. So even if you went to England and used an adapter, there's a chance you'll blow it up because England is 230 volts too. So it's worth checking. Um, the number, like I mentioned, will be uh, like, all you need to do is look on your adapters and it'll say here, like the AC or whatever thing, but 100 volt. Uh, sorry, up here, AC 100 volt to 200 uh, to 120 volt here. And what you need to make sure that all your electronics will go up to at least what the country that you're going to's voltage is. Um, so I, I may take you guys along to the electronics store. Let's go buy a new USB 3 hub and then I can finally show you <laughs> what music sounds like in a room like this. God fucking damn it. Well, one of the good bits about fucking up is I get to uh, walk to the store on a bright sunny day through a nice little park which is always fun with JJ who's helping me with the Hungarian the Hungarians all the Hungarians with all the Hungarians and whatnot yeah. so uh, you know Hungarian. this should be good at least so that was a failed trip I ended up having to explain to them the difference between an active and a passive USB apparently Hungarians don't believe in <laughs> active USB hubs so uh, we're trying a, a different place now I should probably cross the road. Well, I think the failure was actually on my on my well, part. Well, I it was failed to explain it in Hungarian. It's it's tough to translate English to Hungarian, particularly when I start throwing in random units of measurement. Like you imagine you have ten power in a passive USB hub, yeah, <laughs> and the hard drive takes up ten power. You have no power left. <laughs> they were so confused. Then the one guy who speaks English, who, who uh, he came over and just went, yeah, it's it's active and passive, and they're like, oh, okay. And so now we're uh, walking through some some random places and uh, trying to find a, an active USB hub. If not, it's just going to have to be Amazon dot mm -hmm. hu, I guess. Dot hu, yeah. Dot hu, and then we'll get some powered hubs. This turned into a bit of an adventure vlog. I apologise. It was supposed to be. This is my nomad studio, but it's turned into me failing once after another. But one has to be prepared for any eventuality when. Yes. So whenever you travel, make sure your studio is near an electronics store, <laughs> or at least has internet with Amazon. So yeah, yeah, this is going well. This is where we're going. Extreme For digital. Gorbos. No, that, that's like, that means dentist. But extreme that means digital. dentist. Let's not go to the dentist. <laughs> okay. So the dentist, unfortunately, did not have the USB charger, but it did have a powered USB 2 hub. So. What I'm going to do is that allows me to at least use my keyboard, my uh, MIDI keyboard, my MIDI controller and my mouse, um, all of which need active USB, which is a pain in the ass, but it's something worth noting. Um, that's another thing that I didn't mention is um, like if you're doing if you're using a lot of musical equipment like I'm doing for a Nomad setup, you do actually need to keep in mind that passive USB hubs um, don't normally do the job. So you have to uh, you probably can't see me, I'm probably a shadow at the moment because the sun's right behind us. But yeah, um, you definitely need an active one. So an active one will do for now until I can get a USB 3. But uh, you know, 
working at half mast is better than not working at all, I suppose. So uh, the Hungarian came through for us. <laughs> okay, so crisis averted. Um, as I mentioned, I, I blew up the power adapter for my USB 3 hub, but I realized something, I realized something. Well, let me get through the story. So I went out um, to basically replace it, you know, go out and find a replacement USB 3 hub that would um, allow me to uh, basically plug in the mouse, the keyboard, uh, and these. Because what tends to happen is when I plug, uh, when I plug these, particularly these and the mouse in, um, they actually draw a lot of power. So already by this point, a passive USB struggles. And then when I put on top of that USB 3 hard drive and the iLock, um, what tends to happen is I tend to run out of power. So either things start switching on and off or um, you know things just don't power up at all. And particularly when I'm using my hard drive, I need I need a stable connection because it can actually be dangerous for um, hard drives to power uh, on and off when you're when you're using them. So um, what I did is I went out and bought a USB 2 hub. That was the best I could find, but it was an active one. And I noticed that the power adapter was the exact same size as my USB 3 uh, uh, hub. So what I did is I actually plugged. Uh, <laughs> first, I checked the voltage on the uh, on the power brick. So this thing here, and unlike the one I got in Japan it was actually 100 to 240 volts. So I thought, okay, it can go down to 100 volts, which is what this USB 3 hub needs to power it. So I plugged it in and lo and behold, the USB 3, uh, the actual hub didn't blow up when I, plugged in, uh, when I plugged it in, just the power adapter did. So now I have my USB 3 hub working again and I have a power adapter which will adapt, uh, which will be able to power it regardless of country. And I also now have a spare USB 2 hub should I need some extra um, some extra ports. So now I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I have 15 USB hubs <laughs> and four of them are USB 3 powered. So that's good. That means I can basically plug a USB 2 hub into one of the USB 3 hubs and have enough power and uh, bandwidth, you know, to run anything I should need. So uh, in order to celebrate, um, I have, I'm going to pour myself a celebratory Pepsi Max. Fortunately, unlike Japan, which did not have Pepsi Max, um, Hungary does. So I'm going to celebrate with that. But first I thought I'd uh, just quickly sit down. So this is basically the studio um, set up as it is. So if I put the camera up to my head, it's now resting on my forehead. This is the setup that I have um, when, I'm, when I'm abroad. So when I'm, I'm portable. So as you can see, like the screen back here is actually 1080, but then um, like the, 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 it's not 1080, is it? It's uh, 1080 is the height, so that the first number's higher. <laughs> the, the MacBook Pro screens actually, um, yeah, the MacBook Pro screens are actually uh, deeper. They're more of a square than a rectangle. So uh, you have like the, whereas 1080p is like a rectangle, now you have the extra space. I forget because um, you don't actually get to set the actual numbers on this one, so I don't know what the numbers specifically are. So, you know, like if I can, you know, I could probably play some, uh, actually, no, oh, what can I play? Dun, dun, dun. So what I'm gonna quickly do here is show you, um, it will be hard to hear on this microphone because the GoPro microphone's kind of crap, but if I just quickly play you uh, some music, you'll hear how much echo there actually is in this place, which is okay. So already, already I'm hearing that there's um, a lot of uh, mid and low mid uh, being thrown around the room. You know, these are things that I can compensate for. I mean, as it, as it stands presently, I know what sounds good and bad, but the longer I get here, the more used to the room I'll get, and the more I'll stop seeing the bits that are wrong because they'll just sound right because that's the room I'm in. So I need to keep referencing the tracks I write on my, um, on my headphones here, which I just still have with me here. So that's all good, but now I have a workable setup. It means that I can, um, you know, w when, I'm, when I'm good and ready, which should be right now, I can get back to work and actually start, um, 
you know, finishing off some of these tracks that I have been putting off for a while. Well, I haven't been putting them off. It's, you know, I've been traveling and, and whatnot. So all these good things. Um, in the next video, I plan to uh, actually answer more of your questions. So I did see that some of you were sending questions through Twitter. So I will make a point of, um, you know, when I'm when I'm on my next video, when I get another another little bit of downtime, I will make sure to check them. So cool, like everything's working fine. You can see I got. Normally I'd have been like this. Like... Okay, glorious. Uh, so thank you guys for watching this random nomadic uh, video today. Just before we go, to summarize, I will explain um, everything that we have. So, you know, we showed the two bags that I put my entire studio in. These are what go with me everywhere. Um, I've discovered that I need to get a kilogram out of this because you're only supposed to have 10 kilograms on a plane and this is 11 currently with what it has in it. So I need to put more in this bag, which is lighter. Um, and it's also tricky to get away with having two bags. But with me in those two bags, I carry a MacBook Pro. Um, I'll just quickly pull up the settings because I got it wrong earlier. So this is a 2.8 gigahertz Intel Core i7. Uh, I believe it's quad core. Uh, yeah, I think it's quad core. Uh, 16 gigabytes of memory DDR3. Uh, and it's got a AMD Radeon R9 M37X 2048 megabit. So a two gigabyte graphics card. So that's good if I was powering another monitor. Normally what I do is if I'm staying somewhere for a longer period of time, I'll actually buy a HD monitor and plug into that um, with the HDMI. So I have two screens, but I'm only here for three weeks uh, currently. And then I'm moving over to Los Angeles in September. So, you know, like it's not important for now. So anyway, in, in the bags, so in the laptop, bag, uh, sorry, in the backpack, I hold this, uh, the, the laptop, I hold all the USB connections over here. I have my um, hard drives. I have an SSD here and I have my main, uh, hard drive here and I also have my headphones in the backpack and in the suitcase so in the large uh, the the carry-on case we have two Genelec uh, 8010s we have an Apollo twin a key station M audio key station 32 uh, I could fit the foot pedal in as well but this doesn't take sustain so I'm still looking for a 32 mini key uh, MIDI keyboard uh, mini <laughs> that that's a tongue twister I'm still looking for a 32 key mini MIDI keyboard uh, that has a sustain jack in the back, um, which for some reason this one does not. It has a sustain button, but um, it's not important because most of this job is uh, percussion and sound design. So I don't need to be holding string lines or anything like that. So I don't need a sustain pedal, but it does hold it, but that's another bit of weight I have to keep in mind. Anyway, so I have uh, the Keystation Mini 32 by M Audio and I have a Nano Korg Nano Control 2, uh, an Apple keyboard, I have the mouse in there as well. And then of course, all the leads and this uh, adapter will go in it too. So, and that, that's actually a pro tip. If you're going to a country, uh, if you're going to a country where you, um, you know, where you don't have the sockets, do uh, like one thing you can invest in making sure that all the voltages are correct is you can buy either an adapter for the country you're going to, like I've done here, because I, you know, I could buy the leads separate and then have them for this trip. But if you're going to a country, what you can do is find a power adapter for the sockets you have. So if you're an American, you know, an American power socket. For me, I should have bought an English one and then just get a really decent um, converter, you know, one of these things uh, and plug your brick into that in the wall. So that way uh, you only need one adapter for, you know, the six or seven sockets you have, uh, which is useful. So that's that's literally it. That is that is all I take with me on my nomadic setup. And like I say, I've done I've done two video games and a film now um, on this setup, and it's it's not even croaked. Um, it's you know like I've had no trouble, and I'm writing the exact same style music that I have been doing. So I, I mean I, I don't know what to say. Like technology has got to a point where you can now be really mobile and still extremely high quality. And also throwing to the the fact that on this project I have uh, someone else mixing the music for me. It means that all I need to do is get it as close as I can and then it will be um, corrected at an end stage. Although I do still believe, and I genuinely do say this, I'm not just saying this, I think I could get it to my uh, my normal mix quality for good or bad. If you've heard my music, you can make your own mind up about that. I, I genuinely think I could get it up to that quality, even in this room, um, because I know these headphones inside and out and I know when I'm missing things. Um, 
so yeah i hope i hope you i said this like 10 minutes ago but i hope you guys have enjoyed uh, watching this video today um if you have any questions about anything i've showed today please do put them down in the comments section i will answer them down there when i when i get a free moment um and yeah i, I will probably vlog a few times from here in hungary while i'm working and then once i'm done here i'm off to los angeles and of course um, some of you are there. I'll probably arrange some form of meetup uh, when I get there. That'll be fun so I can meet all you guys in person. Um, but until then, thank you for watching. Uh, do make sure to follow me on Twitter. At H2Daniel is my handle. Um, that's where I post whenever I'm going to do a video or whenever I'm looking for questions for one or if I ever go live streaming or if I'm doing something specific. That's where you'll find out about it. That's the best place to uh, keep in touch. And I do read it because, you know, I get all my Twitter on my phone so I can... Um, you know, if you guys tweet at me, I do read it. So there is that. Anyway, thank you for watching again for the fifth time, I think. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.